Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Mad Wall Poetry Podcast where today is kind of a weird episode. I am going to be speaking to you from the future and then from the past. It's one of those things. But I want to give you a little bit of updates on other shit real quick. So the first thing is, is that... The episode I did last time on Amelia Russo. One thing that I want known, because I already had finished the episode when this happened, but I reached out to Amelia through her Instagram to ask her to kind of answer some of the questions that I raised in the podcast that hadn't come out yet. She did not respond to me when I didn't hear anything from her. Because I said I am posting an episode of my podcast and I'm not trying to be a troll. I'm just trying to understand why, A, you didn't say anything about this, 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 or that. And why you wanted to even do the article in the first place. And just, like, typical questions, right? But she didn't respond to me, so whatever. So I didn't add anything to the episode saying that because there was nothing to add you know so i just put the episode up over on slee ricketts on the secret show he talked about listening to the episode and how it made him think about association and stuff of that nature he was thinking about having her on to talk about the stuff that she said in her article She responded to him, and I guess they're going to do an episode now. So I'm super excited to hear what she has to say. I'm really hoping Matthew hits the questions that I asked in my episode on it. And then some other things he did explain was that Compact the Magazine apparently was started by two conservatives and a Marxist. I don't know if they were trying to have this, like, utopia magazine where everyone's views could be heard and shit like that. Um, Those never seem to work, whether it's a magazine or a news outlet, you know. And then after the Dobbs decision, the um, Marxist guy left. So I, I could assume things based on that information. I try not to get super deep in the weeds. I try to look at it as if someone never knew this magazine existed and they, like, heard about this article and read it, what would their probable interpretation of everything in front of them, what would that be? I am just someone who stumbles upon things and then looks at the things, reads the things. Like I said to Bucks, I'm like, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck... And then I think I said it's probably a turtle. But I was just fucking around. The next thing we're going to talk about here is this episode. This episode is brought to you with a grant. No, I'm just kidding. This this episode is um, from an article on a site called Unheard, which should probably be unseen. Um, no, but, uh, I'm not going to go in and intercut the stuff that I came up with. So I guess I'm giving you spoilers right now is the best way that this is going to go. This article, like you're going to hear me say, did he perhaps me? Did he just fucking perhaps me? This article or essay, in order for it to work, certain things need to work. In order for the essay to work, certain things need to be absolutes or else the premise of the essay fails and one of these things is mr s view of primitive and archaic poetry being primal and violent and all this stuff okay he was talking about this dude named jerome rothenberg who i had never heard of before who has a super long history writing poems, translating poems, the whole fucking thing. The video that I'm going to bring up for this is a poetry reading by Jerome Rothenberg from eight months ago at the Kelly Writer's House. Okay, so I fucked up and um, had the wrong video 
saying that that was where Jerome was talking about it. So um, I have the right one now. And um, this is from the Poetics Talk by Jerome Rothenberg on 4.11.14. And this is from the University of Chicago Division of Humanities. So I'm just going to turn this and play this little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it okay. Technicians of the Sacred is a world anthology of uh, what at that point had been called uh, primitive, uh, primitive and archaic poetry. Uh, and so I began that with uh, you know, the, the statement, uh, primitive means complex. So from the horse's mouth, primitive means complex. It, it doesn't mean what this dude says it means. The reason why I bring this up is because this whole dude who wrote this article or essay, it's about violence and poetry and kind of, it, it's supposed, there's, there's a ton of issues with the title of the article, the subtitle of the article and what the article actually is. But he kept going back to the, the primal and the archaic and all this stuff talking about like how poets used to write of viscera and all this other stuff because they were hunting and just he says a bunch of shit here and he bases it on the writings of Jerome Rothenberg that's what he meant by primitive and that's what he meant by archaic complex and hard to understand poetry because this dude is a fucking like modernist and a postmodernist and like did a bunch of Dada shit. So the work that this dude is like basing his whole essay on and his whole chance meeting with fucking Nick Cave is based on the idea that the words that this dude uses are meaning different things. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm on this kick right now. And I did it when I was reading the Amelia Russo article. And I think I do it in this article too. And I started doing it when I was doing research for an upcoming episode. But I swear to God, I think what I'm going to do for now on is every time I do an article on the show, I'm going to copy the article, cut out all of the superfluous and fucking unneeded, overblown and verbose descriptions and just whatever and put in the body of this what the article actually says and you're gonna see that without these fancy words and fucking bow ties and shit that a lot of these articles i read do not say very much at all and that's sad but like i don't, I don't know what else to do and i'm sure someone will go well yeah if you took all your adjectives and adverbs out like your shit would be pretty boring too great this article hardly talks about violence at all and it definitely does not talk about censorship and it definitely doesn't talk about prudish writers hello everybody and welcome uh, to this video where today we are going to be finding out actually i don't know what we're going to be finding out it has something to do with violence and censorship. Um, I'm going to be doing one of my read-throughs of an article, and we'll see how it goes. This article was sent to us, I believe, by Jeff Taylor. So, um, thank you, Jeff, for that. I combed my hair ten minutes ago, and this is what it's become. I don't, I don't get it. Um, just so you know, as I'm recording this, in just a few hours... The launch party for Winner Your Mom Sodomy Prize for Poetry will be happening because today is launch day, bitches. Links down below um, where you can pick that book up. All right, um, let's get into this bad mamma jamma. Oh, real quick, I should say this too. I don't know exactly what's going on. Stupid. I don't know exactly what's going on, but because I was using my music in the intro to this show, I haven't decided yet, but that's the reason why it like was on Spotify 
for like a day and now it's not why it's not on Amazon anymore. And that is because I have distribution for my music and my distributor sells my music on those platforms. And because, I don't know, it's my music, um, I don't have the rights to it. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I'm either going to not have the little do-do-do-do on the show anymore. Yeah, I might just, like, drop the whole music thing altogether. Yeah, so that's exciting. So now you know. So, on with the fucking show. All right. um, This article is from a site called unheard i don't know there'll be a fucking link for it and this is has poetry nope i dyslexied that poetry has lost its violence he's like i don't need to ask a fucking question censorious prudes miss the point of art by justin e h smith wow he's not fucking around he's like you want me to have three fucking names? I'm going to have four. Although now it looks like it's spelled Justin Ugh, Smith. Oh, that's awful. That's why I never went by my first initial and second initial. Because it would be M.T. Wall. And I didn't want people to think, oh, that's an empty wall over there. That dude's empty. You know? Yeah, over here knows what's up. Okay. So let's see what his qualifications are here. Uh, is the author of the internet is not what you think it is. Okay. And he writes on Substack. All right, cool. All right. So here we go. Now this site is set up in a way that now I have to like scroll and drag to get the actual article over here. Now I thought this was just, what is fucking going on? Find a fucking parking spot. Jesus fucking Christ. Up and down, up and down. So I thought this was just an article, but it's a fucking essay. I don't know. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I say that every time, and then I end up reading almost everything. Oh, man, I'm already bored. Jerome Rothenberg, age 91, has made immeasurable contributions to American poetry over the past seven decades. Born in New York in 1931, he first came onto the scene in 1959 with New Young German Poets. The unintended fruit of his just completed service in the U.S. Army's occupation of Germany. I'm gonna fucking throw a goddamn pipe bomb at that fucking car. Ugh. This collection of Rothenberg's translations included poems by a, a bunch of fucking people. I'm getting fucking bored. Um, poetry after Auschwitz, uh, but Rothenberg's most enduring contribution would come a decade later after a fairly radical shift from modernism to the new project of ethnopoetics. What we call poetry today is mostly an... Hey, what I call being stuck up your own ass is getting a thesaurus out to find every fucking word that I'm not going to fucking know trying to read your thing, you elitist piece of garbage. In fact, poetry, for much of human history, was not words on a page, for there were no pages, and the words were not... Ugh. So poetry was not visible, n- nor was poetry just spoken words, but rather these words were one component of a total artistic form that also included motion, gesture, and often rhythm and melody, Its purpose was to realign the human with the cosmic, to affirm the embeddedness of our mundane, earthy experience within a vastly larger order. Dude, I understand you're trying to write an essay, and I understand you're trying to let everyone know how fucking smart you are, but you are boring the fucking crap out of me with these sentences. Like... Basically, this whole paragraph was like, poetry used to not be on paper, and it wasn't just spoken words. It had these things. Done. All this other shit. Dude, I fucking hate essays. I hate fucking writers. I hate people. Oh, Mr. Ech also wrote, your Fitbit has stolen your soul. This guy's really worried about stuff, because the internet is also not what you think it is. Fuck, he must be a fucking joy at parties, dude. 
he goes up and he's like, everyone's having a good time. And he's like, hey, do you know how many carcinogens are in that thing you're eating? <laughs> hey, this is a lovely party. Do you know I just had diarrhea? Oh, I think I'm dying. <laughs> And then someone in the corner is like, ah, it's fucking, uh, this fucking guy. <laughs> and then as someone's laughing, he fucking comes up and he's like, do you know the statistics about how many people die from laughing every year? I do. I won't tell you what the number is. You're going to not like it. Okay. Let, let's see what the next thing this guy does that's really exciting. Um, I have for some years been working on a translation of the Siberia. Oh. Okay. So that's what he's been up to. Let's see. It's hard to simulate the metaphor and meter in English. Dude, this is the same thing we've been talking about. And if you haven't heard yet, if you are a Secret Show subscriber, you would hear um, Jens over on the Secret Show. And that was really interesting and fun. I like that. They talked about translations. Okay, he was having a hard time dealing with a metaphor... Still waiting for poetry to get violent. Like, the only the only violence in this fucking essay is me getting mad at the essay. Um, yet it would be a mistake to suppose that these realities are just linguistic. For, in fact, the language of poetry, perhaps especially of archaic poetry, is typically condensed out of the entire lived translinguistic reality of the bard who channels it and to try to reconstruct that reality in another language as if it were entirely constituted from words to, to misrepresent perhaps inevitably <laughs> the original work. Jesus fucking Christ, I wanted to shoot myself the whole time I was reading that. Oh, oh my God, this is really difficult for me. And I know, like... Oh, this sucks. Okay, um... What results is also a pale shadow of the original, but at least it's a pale shadow that acknowledges... Okay, so he's basically saying, I wrote a translation of this thing. It's not very good, but I think it's okay. All right, whatever. One way of continuing to do these things today is by leaving poetry in our narrow sense behind. One way of continuing to do these things today is by leaving poetry in our narrow sense behind and pursuing the sort of performance that today we call music. I do not agree. I don't fucking agree. There are so many different fucking types of poetry that all of this other shit, because what you're fucking basically talking about is a monologue. You're basically talking about a one-man fucking show. One fucking dude going up there, throwing his arms around, fucking, oh my god! And like, I'm speaking in meter and rhyme, you fuck, and moving my arms. That's fucking performance bullshit. And great, it was done like that when fucking dinosaurs roamed the earth. I give uh, this many fucks. This is, this is how many fucks I give. And if you're just listening to the show, I'm doing zero. I give zero fucks about what poetry was. I give zero fucks about what everyone's really fucking complaining about here. Just fucking do something simple and beautiful. That's all I'm fucking asking for here. Ugh. Whatever. Upstate New York. Uh, dude, maybe it's just because I'm just someone who is not an educated man. I don't know if you had a word count you were trying to hit with this essay. Probably you were. You got to think of your audience, dude. Maybe you are thinking of your audience. The, your audience is people with huge attention spans, with no fucking problems, who just want to read a ridiculously long fucking thing that makes them feel good about themselves. So, whatever. Okay, so such transformations as this is among the potentials of archaic poetry. Poetry conceived as a total art form whose purest expression is ritual, unlike what we might ordinarily expect from a recitation of the work of, say, Robert Frost. That would bore the fuck out of me, too. Such transformation or something like it is also possible through a sufficiently vibrant performance in the humble genre of the rock song. Or you could just play music. And indeed, a number of the genre's familiar names. 
Warren, Zevon, Eddie Vedder have over the years drawn inspiration from Rothenberg's work. But surely no singer songwriters of Yule is more overtly indebted to the American poet than Nicholas Cavius. I've been listening to Nick Cave for about 35 years, and I have seen him as one of the few singer songwriters currently working whose lyrics deserve attention in their own right. But it was only when I happened to learn of our shared admiration for Jerry Rothenberg's work that I began to see Nick's lyrical sensibility as distinctly Rothenbergian. It dawned on me that Nick might have a greater claim than Jerry to be in the business of creating total works of art of the starter culture of poetry. That is, Nick generates poetic lyrical ideas, but he doesn't stop with these. He puts them to music. And then he unfolds them in performance that have perhaps increasingly in his late style the character of ritual he appears in fact increasingly committed to leading and facilitating some kind of collective transformation he's bringing us back to church like it or not and perhaps to the liminal place beside the fire in the night where strange uh dude i really want to give this a chance but uh, I don't know. And then he starts talking. He, he's like, here, here's an example of his stuff. Yeah, Nick Cave's fucking great. What's the fucking problem? Um, Rumi and Homer, okay. Uh, Jerry's poetic voice is equally compelling in a big Jewish book where he sought to demonstrate why it is that after Auschwitz there's only poetry. This thesis is not original with me. The great Austrian classicist... Oh, wait, wait, I saw, the, I saw the V word here. Uh, speculate the origins of human culture lie in... Oh, my God. So this whole thing was just a thing. So he can perhaps me? He's gonna fucking perhaps me right now? I just read a ton of this fucking essay for him to perhaps me with a clickbaity title? Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So he says, he's talking about these motherfuckers who back in the olden days would write poetry about cutting the viscera out of fucking deer, um, sliding a knife into its underbelly. Quite well on such things. Who fucking cares? Jesus Christ, dude. They dwelled on those things because they dwelled on those things. It doesn't fucking matter. And then he says, Perhaps because violence necessitates poetry. All right, I'll bite. Except um, poets are the most non-violent, pansy-ass bunch of motherfuckers I've ever met. I'm trying to fix that right now, actually. Dude, like, I'm getting... The more and more I fucking read stuff, the more and more I'm getting, like, we need to fucking Antifa this bitch up. Like, I'm getting, like... <sighs> like, do I want poetry to be fucking dangerous? Yes. Do I want it to be violent? I think poetry should be violent by nature. But I'm getting fucking mad now. Okay. Um, perhaps because violence necessitates poetry or whatever. Or to put it the other way around, poetry, properly understood, concerns itself above all with violence. I feel like there's too many caveats in that stupid sentence, and I feel like his whole ball sack is fucking hanging on this thing. Or to put it the other way around. Okay, so how many commas do we have in here? One, two, three, four. Wow, that's a lot of commas. Okay, or, and well, there was a semicolon before that, too. Or, to put it another way around. Poetry, that you know, the thing we've been talking about this whole fucking time, okay. Um, properly understood, meaning understood however the fuck it is, I want you to understand it, concerns itself above all with violence. I think on the most fundamental level, he introduced me to permanent poetry. Nick told me on the phone from London earlier this year. Oh my God, he got a fucking quote from Nick fucking Cave. Okay, this is fucking, oh my God. 
I think there was a change in my writing. I can't really pinpoint it, but I have a feeling that it coincided with me reading Technicians of the Sacred. It is in the encounter with this anthology, too, that Nick experiences the complicated homecoming. Every truth-seeking, truth-seeking colonial son must face sooner or later. In Technicians of the Sacred, to my shame, I read my first indigenous poetry, even though I'm Australian. I hadn't read any of it. Hadn't really read any of it. That's actually kind of interesting, because Alice kind of talks about that a lot on her show. He recalls the excitement of discovering a new sort of poetry that was a little violent, deeply surreal and sexual, and non also non-ironic. Um... Well, this sounds fucking great. I would love to fucking read it. Um, that was explicitly designed for ritual and prayers and transformation and these sorts of things, which were really very much looked down upon by much of the modern poetry that I would read. I mean, the anti-spiritual, ironic modern poetry. So Nick Cave says that these poems remind him of Psalms. Let's see. Um, the collection... Uh, they were these religious poems, shall we say, or spiritual or ritual poems that were deeply violent and at the same time songs of praise. And I think that fed into something that I was blindly reaching around for. An extraordinary enmeshment of style and time and of the mundane and the cosmic. It just blew my mind, he pauses. I mean... It's like the fundamental, the fundamental violence of things. Life grows less eventful as we age, and the gap between our quotidian experience and the heroic register into which we spent our youth projecting ourselves only seems to widen. I keep saying to my wife, Nick tells me, that these songs are small, unimpressive autobiographies kind of wrapped up in heroic myths and religious writing and wildly surrealism. Oh, my God. Um, even though I might be seen cosmically, as, uh, the songs are rooted in the very most fundamental and mundane events rather than boring life. Dude, this is a boring episode of a podcast reading this fucking thing. Yeah, Murder Ballads is fucking awesome. Uh, it, it channels violence in its purest form. Yeah, but we're talking about music. Like, it's a different thing. Um, and perhaps give us, oh my god, of homicidal ideation in its rendition of the blues classic Staggerly, which is fucking awesome. Uh, would Nick really crawl over 50 good pussies just to get one fat boy's asshole? Probably not. But... That is a Philistine question. Oh, I want to punch this guy in his fucking dick, dude. There's a fucking Philistine question for you. The faculty of the imagination is not the same thing as the will. And what an artist is channeling under the spell of a mythopoetic violence is not an action plan, a manifesto, or a credo, but a complete picture of human life. Oh my god, this guy, like, actually wrote this and spent time making this his fucking... Oh. This is a picture that traditional and popular art forms, notably Delta Blues, have excelled in capturing, in contrast with profit-driven and algorithmically optimized commercial entertainment, which unsurprisingly veer towards a conception of art as handmaiden of conventional morality and thus as appropriately inhibiting only a very limited range of possible human perspectives. Okay, the fact that you are making art so fucking, like, a goddamn thing you put under a microscope is just as annoying as everything you're saying commercial entertainments have done to art. Like, this is rough, dude. Oh my god. Oh, he's using Bard again. Oh, I don't fucking believe any of this, dude. Well, I'd say if anyone out there is, like, battling insomnia, this article um, will really help you. This is one of those things that drive me fucking crazy. 
especially about essays. You have to go around your asshole to get to your elbow. It, it seems like the point of an essay is to take something that is common sense or something that is completely obvious to everyone and then spend all of what you learned in your education to say the least amount of stuff in as many words possible and try to make someone change their mind about something that they probably already agree with you on if you weren't shoving your head up your own ass. I think this apparent transcendence has something to do with his positioning of himself by design or by instinct in the lineage of poets and with his understanding no doubt helped by his discovery of Jerry Rothenberg's work that poetry probably properly understood is the total art form from which all other modern art forms have been parted out it is the art form that reckons with the violence of things and continually sets our broken world back in order again I can see poetry being the, like, one of the oldest art forms. Probably the oldest from which all other modern, modern art forms have been parted out. I don't think that's true. I think motherfuckers were probably painting on cave walls before they were writing odes. Oh, was that really the end of it? That's all he fucking had to say? So, here, here's what I'm going to do. Um, because I just got pissed off looking at some of these fucking comments. So, um, that article was boring as all fuck. And, um, Jeff, I do appreciate you sending it to me. Um, it just didn't fucking say anything. It was just like poetry was violent at one point. I think here's Nick cave, a musician. Like what the fuck are you doing? Okay. So here we go. Um, Jonathan Nash says, the Gorman recital at the Biden inauguration tells you all you need to know about the state of poetry in the U.S. at the moment. Okay, that was 14 days ago. The Amanda Gorman thing was like two fucking years ago, bro. Oh my fucking God. <sighs> the fact that you're still um, worried about that tells me all I need to know about the state of poetry in the U.S. at the moment. Jonathan fucking Nash. A.C. Harper says, Censorous prudes are everywhere, but nowadays the prudishness is not so much about sex as social wrong think. And there are many wrong thinkers about. A censor's work is never done. Oh my God. Um, I'm not a fan of Nick Cave and certainly not a student of poetry. Okay, then I don't want to fucking have read anything you have to fucking say. Um, <clears throat> when I were a lad, there were several world-class British and Irish poets still publishing. Philip Larkin, John, that guy, Auden, Ted Hughes, Haney, and the last generation, Dylan Thomas, Elliot... Uh, Okay, you know a bunch of names. have only been dead for a few years. And every generation before them produced a handful of poets who we still read today. Yet I struggle to name one from the last 20 years. No shit, Matt M. Thank you. Because there are no rock star poets anymore. It, it just, it doesn't. Like, you might know Amanda Gorman. That's it. But you're, you're knowing Amanda Gorman because of Amanda Gorman, not because of what Amanda Gorman has written. You know Rupi Cower because of who Rupi Cower is, not because of what Rupi Cower has written. Oh, wait, no. Okay, uh, here, here, check this out. Um, ready, ready? Matt M., you're going to need to hold someone's beer because Dermot O'Sullivan is coming in like a fucking wrecking ball. Okay, and he, he says, yet I struggle to name one from the last 20 years. Huh, how about Dennis O'Driscoll, you fuck? And then David Vess says, Jeffrey Hill. Hey, that's the dollhouse guy. Yeah, I remember things. Um, I found this article well written and insightful, says Stephen Murray. However, when the writer refers to art and includes pretty much all aspects of the various art forms open to humanity, including music and rhythm dance, there's one omission. 
visual art. Yeah, whatever. Um, I agree. He did talk about everything but the kitchen sink and visual art. Um, okay, now people are debating this. Oh, the, people are really getting into this. Jesus Christ, give long-winded motherfuckers a fucking place to fucking run their dick liquor and they just fucking go for it. Um, oh, we're still in replies here. Wow. AJ Mack and... Um, Paul somebody and they're really going to town interesting uh huh Woo, I'm glad that we got past that misunderstanding oh they had a misunderstanding I wonder if there was violence in here sorry AJ my comment must have been unclear okay whatever like ah oh, Nick Cave lemon good squeezer some more juice okay Poetry properly understood. Um, okay, so B. Davis says it too. Um, from which all other modern art forms have been parted out. Nah, I don't buy that. <laughs> uh, that's just silly. Oh, wow, they're saying a lot of stuff. Um, yes, yeah, songwriters are new, are the new poets. Hey, hey guys, hey guys, um, Nicholas Taylor has a hot take, um, get in there, uh, V Solar, thank you, Justin Ugh, Smith, I have never heard of Jerome Rothenberg, um, but there's a lot of his work on YouTube, it's very interesting, well, there you guys go, you guys can go check that out now, oh man, someone wrote a fucking poem, and got five dislikes yeah no shit oh god um so that was fucking painful as all fuck what was the name of this fucking stupid article again poetry has lost its violence censorous okay here's the thing like am i fucking stupid here like was there a big part of this article that dealt with censorship because i didn't see that unless it was in those like two paragraphs i just skimmed through but Jesus Christ, like I'm trying to read an article, not the phone book. <sighs> Poetry has lost his violence. Um, Justin S. Smith's essay lost the plot. That wasn't that interesting to me. I was really hoping it was going to be more um, radical and more, not necessarily engaging, but that there would be like a call to action in this for poets to not only bleed a little bit but fucking light themselves on fire in the streets i don't know if that makes any sense i don't know that was a thing all right everybody so for the butt plugs today i have been recording individual poems and putting those up on my YouTube page. And I kind of went through a kick of um, City Lights poets. So I did um, Frank O'Hara, Kenneth Patchen, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and um, Allen Ginsberg. I just read a poem or two or three, but um, individually. So I have a playlist on my channel now that's just called Poems. And it's just going to be poems with no talk no this poem's about this no critical thinking about it just poem and there you go poem there you go and in the future i'm going to be adding some bukowski some tchaikovsky some blazik some steve richmond some stephen bruce and then I'm going to be going through putting some of my stuff in there. But I'm also going to be going through and putting in some Anarchy Crew folks. Some stuff out of the Bloodshed Review. Some stuff out of um, like the Poetic Anarchy anthologies and shit like that. It'll be a, a wide swath. Whenever Your Mom's Hot Any Price for Poetry is out now at my Etsy shop. Pick that up. So somewhere around here there's going to be some fucking playlist of other episodes in this podcast series type art everybody and i will talk to you all later i just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew of the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you